Hi guys and welcome back to Cute Life Hacks. I'm Joanna and in this video I'll show you some tips and tricks for working with acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is so useful for DIYs because it's cheap to buy, it dries quickly and it sticks to almost any surface. You can use it for clay crafting, room decor, phone cases or customizing three-dimensional toys. As an example, I'm going to show you how I created this doll which was actually a present for Lisa's birthday. I decided to paint it so it matches the colors of her new hairstyle. If you're new here, then please be sure to subscribe to become a Cutinator. You can also follow me on Instagram under my username Macaroon. I often post exclusive tutorials there, such as this one on how to get rainbow text for your Instagram story. First of all, let's get started with an overview of the three most common types of paint. If you go into any art shop, then you'll find watercolor or gouache paint, acrylic and oil paint. Gouache is a very pigmented version of watercolor, so these two are basically the same thing. All three paints look really similar when they're in tubes, so it's important not to get any of these confused with each other. The big difference between these paints is how they behave once they're dry. To demonstrate this, I'm going to swatch these blue paints. The first is watercolor, the second is acrylic, and the third is oil paint. Then I'll leave them to dry for 10 minutes. Now I'm going to go over them using another brush dipped in plain water. As you can see, watercolor pigments are not waterproof and they will always dissolve upon contact with moisture. This is definitely not ideal for DIY projects because you don't want the color rubbing off every time you touch it. Now let's do the same experiment using acrylic paint. This time the paint is completely waterproof. Acrylic paint also dries very quickly, which is great for DIYs because it means you don't have to wait a long time before moving on to the next step. And now let's take a look at oil paint. This is extremely unsuitable for any type of DIY work, so I would recommend staying away from it completely. Oil paint takes days to dry and it doesn't mix well with a lot of materials. It's also very difficult to clean up and you have to use special solvents like turpentine instead of soap and water. So in a nutshell, watercolor and oil paint are best used for pure fine art painting. Acrylic paint is the only one that's good for DIY and crafting projects, which is why I'm going to focus on that in the rest of this video. Most art shops sell a 10 pack of acrylic paints like this, and it's perfectly good to get started with. You can mix everything you need using these basic colors. Of course, the more you work, the more you might realize that you often use a certain color so you can get that separately to save you time mixing the paints. In my case, I always have an olive green, turquoise and purple paint as extras. Titanium white is the color that will get used up most quickly, so you might as well buy a big tube of this as backup. The paint is extremely opaque, which makes it very useful for DIYs because it covers up other things very quickly. It contains a pigment called titanium dioxide, which is also found in a lot of makeup and body products. Titanium dioxide is actually the secret ingredient inside foundations and concealers which cover up imperfections on your skin. Acrylic paint has very similar properties to white glue. It's easily mixed with water when wet, but it dries into a plastic-like surface. This means you never actually have to clean your palette since you can just let the old paint dry and add new paint on top. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to cleaning my art supplies, so this is another reason why I like working with acrylics. Depending on your project, you can also mix white craft glue into the paint to make it more flexible and less likely to chip. This is a good idea for bendy surfaces such as a soft foam case, sponges or certain types of clay. I have a video here on how I made a squishy using white glue and acrylic paint. But for this project we can leave out the glue, since this piece is made from a heavy resin and it doesn't bend. This is actually a Momiji doll that I designed, but unfortunately it was such a long time ago that all of my dolls are sold out by now. However, you can still find other dolls on their website or use this method to decorate other 3D objects. When working with acrylics, you basically only need two brushes. 
a wide flat one like this and a thin one for details. These fancy brush sets from art shops actually make your life more difficult. This is because every brush holds and applies different amounts of paint, so you basically have to learn a different painting technique for each one. My best advice is just to get used to using one single brush and you'll find that you'll become a lot faster and much more efficient. The best water pot for painting is simply cutting the base off a plastic bottle. This was actually a craft hack from one of my earliest YouTube videos and you can watch that here if you haven't seen it yet. A bottle is perfect because it's transparent so you can easily see when the water needs to be changed. The upper edge is sharp, which is very useful for scraping off precise amounts of paint. And the bottom part of the bottle normally has ridges, which helps to clean your brush a lot faster. I find it's really useful to always have a tissue in your other hand and use it to wipe your brush or clean up mistakes. This helps you work a lot faster, and in many cases you want to use up a certain color before it dries. So now let's get started with our doll. If your piece already has color on it, then you want to cover that up first using a base coat. The best paint for this is, of course, titanium white. It's so opaque that it'll even cover up pure black as you can see here. For best results, you should always use two coats of acrylic paint. Think of it a bit as nail polish. The first coat usually goes on slightly streaky and the second coat makes everything look perfect. Acrylic dries quickly, so chances are the first coat will already be dry by the time you get around to doing the second. The two-layer rule also applies when painting gradients. This can be a bit tricky because you basically have to mix the colors and create the ombre effect twice. If you are not sure about this part, then you can practice painting color transitions on scrap canvas or card. I'll show you two examples of this later on. Another thing to bear in mind is that dried acrylic paint always looks slightly darker than fresh paint. So don't worry if you're painting an area the second time and you notice that the colors don't match up. As long as you didn't change the paint on your palette, then they will end up the same shade. When adding small details, you might find that it helps to dilute the paint with a tiny bit of water. Thin brushes can't hold a lot of color, so you want the paint to flow smoothly instead of smearing. So here's a basic guide on how to paint gradients. As mentioned earlier, you can practice this on scrap paper or canvas before moving onto 3D objects. First of all, take care not to load your brush with too much paint. Then swipe it across the canvas lightly to create a fuzzy edge like this. Now find the two colors you want to blend together on your palette and mix up an intermediate shade. In this case, I'm going to mix the yellow with pink to create an orangey pink. Using the same brush technique, swipe it over the first area so the colors overlap. You can see that the place where the two colors meet doesn't look perfect, which leads onto the next hack. Dilute the orange paint with some water to make it slightly translucent. Then apply this over the gradients to smooth out the transition. The water helps the paint flow into the tiny gaps on the canvas, and the translucency makes it easier to control. Now you can simply repeat this process to create an ombre effect for all kinds of colors. Now that we've covered gradients between different colors, it's time to look at painting light and dark tones of the same color. My best advice for beginners is to stay away from pure black and use dark brown paints to create most of your shadows. In this case, I'm mixing cadmium red with burnt umber to create a dark shadow. This color is easier to work with than mixing red with black. Black paint is great for creating contrast, but it can quickly overpower your painting, so you have to be careful with it. 
to demonstrate, I'm going to mix some black into red, and you can see that even a tiny amount makes a big difference. Especially for beginners, it's easy to apply too much by accident, and this can quickly turn your whole painting muddy. So until you have a bit more experience with acrylics, it's best to avoid black paint or use it very sparingly. Adding highlights is easy because you can simply mix titanium white with your base color. This tends to be much easier to correct and control than making darker shades. By the way, remember how I mentioned keeping a tissue in one hand to clean your brush? This is how the tissue ends up looking for even an extremely simple painting like this, so you can see how useful it is. So now that my doll is finished, I'm going to add some sparkle using Swarovski crystals. Dried acrylic paint has a smooth, plastic-like surface, so you can easily use glue or different types of glazes on top. I'm simply applying some dots of white glue and then sticking the crystals into place. And now my Lisa-inspired doll is complete. For the rest of this video, I'll go through some extra tips and tricks on painting with acrylics. Every type of paint has warm or cool undertones, similar to different types of makeup. I personally prefer using warmer shades, such as cadmium red or cadmium yellow. If you can see a difference between these two colors, then you have a great eye for paint and you should definitely think about going to art. Colors are basically puzzles, and as an artist, you get to learn which component parts make up each shade. When it comes to green paint, I find that warm undertones look a lot better than cool ones. If you have a very bright green like this one, then try mixing it with yellow or ochre to create an olive or pistachio green. The color purple can be made by mixing red and blue, however I find that this never looks quite as vibrant. This is why I like buying separate tubes of purple paint, because I think it simply looks better. Here you can see a comparison between a purple that I made using red and blue and a purple that came out of the tube. The next hack is how to paint skin color. To get started, you'll need these five paints, which are titanium white, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, yellow ochre, and burnt umber. First of all, we're going to make a base color using equal amounts of yellow, red, and white. Once you have this, you can create darker skin tones by adding ochre and brown, or lighter shades using white. As you can see, the base tone we created was right in the middle, so it becomes much easier to adjust up or down. Be sure to clean your brushes while the paint is still wet. You can easily rinse this off using warm water and soap. Once acrylic paint is dry, it becomes extremely difficult to remove. If you get dry paint on the table, then you can try chipping it off with your fingernails or any sharp object. Nail polish remover also works, but please remember that this can take the paint or varnish off certain types of furniture. Acrylic paint is also great for coloring clay, though please remember that this only works for air dry, paper or resin clay, and it doesn't work with polymer clay or muddy clay. I use paint and clay in so many tutorials, and I've linked all of those down below, so be sure to check them out. Acrylic paint is technically non-toxic, however the pigments from certain colors, such as everything containing cadmium, aren't good for your skin. If you're mixing paint into clay, then I recommend wearing rubber gloves to prevent anything from getting onto your hands. When I used to make jewelry, I simply mixed acrylic paint into Modena air dry resin clay. This created a beautiful texture which was ideal for miniature macaroons. Modena clay is slightly translucent, so I used lots of titanium white to make it opaque. 
You can find out more about this clay in many of my older videos here. So I really hope these tips are useful and can help you with future DIY projects. If you have any more questions, then please feel free to leave them in the comments below. This is Joanna, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!